Hello everyone, I'm Rikwala Laurinaho and I'm doing my doctoral studies at the Department of Mechanical Engineering. In this video, I will present the current research related to digital twins in our department. First, I will talk about digital twin broker concept, which is one way to implement a digital twin. After that, I will present the GraphQL interface for Ilmatar Gray. Before moving into digital twin broker, let's start with a question. What is a digital twin about? In short, it's about product data. The most important feature of a digital twin is that it makes the product data available and accessible for all stakeholders. This requires some sort of API, which stakeholders can then use to fetch data of interest. What is this data then? In an ideal world, the digital twin would contain all information which is available from the physical product. In practice, the data could contain, for example, product design data, such as product requirements and designed maximum loads, metadata, such as location of the product, data collected during the use of the product, and maintenance data, for example, which part of the physical product has been changed. This quote is from paper by Heikki Laaki et al. Heikki has done research related to digital twins in our department. Other key aspects of digital twin include improving the product and optimizing the maintenance. Digital Twin allows implementing new features to the physical product and so-called Tesla model in which new features can be proked into the product via software updates. Digital Twin allows improving the product during the use of it. For example, the operation of the product can be improved by collecting data during its operation and Digital Twin can then optimize the control parameters. Especially in manufacturing, the optimization of maintenance is profitable. Digital Twin stores the data collected from the physical product and can run simulation based on these data. The simulation can model the wear of the product. In the future vision, a detailed simulation model can be run ahead of real-world time to predict the future states and failures of the product. With fleet data, a product can be compared to similar products to estimate the need of maintenance. For example, if the brake of an overhead crane usually fails after 10,000 hours of use in certain conditions, it should be replaced after 9,900 hours of use for cranes operating in similar conditions. What the implementation of Digital Twin requires? It's evident that if all the features of Digital Twin are implemented, the software will be massive and millions of lines of code is needed to be written. However, some of the features and systems a Digital Twin needs such as computer-aided design models, already exists. Therefore, to implement a digital twin, it doesn't make sense to implement all the features from scratch. Instead, a digital twin should be an entity which links information from already existing systems together. For that, digital twin should offer an API which allows an access to information from other systems. Currently, industrial systems do not often have good APIs or other interfaces for communication. Therefore, components which translate queries for Digital Twin API to these systems are needed. It should be noted that currently there is no the Digital Twin architecture. There is not even consensus on the definition of the Digital Twin. This is because the requirements and needs for Digital Twins are highly dependent on the physical product. At simplest, a digital twin can be a single electric document about one screw. So what is our vision of digital twin architecture? We think that it should be based on broker which takes care of communication of digital twin. On the right, there is one way to structure digital twin by Audiosalo et al. Digital twin offers a subset of these features and in the middle there is a data link which ties these features together into a single digital twin entity. This data link can also be called broker. The broker offers API which other digital twins, for example in a production line, can use to communicate with the digital twin and its physical counterpart. The broker can be used to access the features of the digital twin. In addition, the broker allows communication between the features and subsystems of the digital twin. The features of a digital twin are implemented by separate software components. These components can then be used by other components or digital twins. The digital twin broker architecture follows microservices architectural style, but not completely because the broker offers also an access to monolithic systems. 
a few words about microservices before we move on to the next topic which is CuffQL and GraphQL interface for Ilmatar. In microservices architectural style, software consists of independent components which offer services. These services can then be consumed via an interface, often via HTTP API. Microservices architectural style offer better scalability than monolithic software. Only the necessary components can be replicated, as is illustrated on the right. One benefit of the microservices architecture is that if modification is needed, only a single component can be replaced. Because services are used via interfaces, modifications to other components are not often needed and the whole software is not needed to be redeployed. Finally, microservices architecture allows easier development as the complexity of the software is reduced due to the clearer structure. Next I will present the GraphQL interface for an overhead crane. But before that, a few words about GraphQL. GraphQL is a query language and also a runtime for executing the queries. Its development started in 2012 by Facebook and it was published as open source in 2015. When using GraphQL, you specify the data you want. For example, in this case, the query returns the title, publisher, genres and the author of the book. In addition, it takes genre as a parameter. If the query would have been conducted using traditional REST API, a request would have been sent into a specific URL which defines the resources to be returned. The filtering of the data is done after the data is received. With GraphQL, the response is also predictable, as it has the same form as the query itself. Compared to REST, GraphQL allows getting data from many resources with a single request. For example, in this case, we can also get author information. With REST, you should do a separate query to get author information. GraphQL uses API-specific methods to implement create, read, update, and delete operations, while REST APIs use HTTP methods such as get, post, and delete. So let's move on to the GraphQL interface for Ilmatar. This interface was implemented as a part of master's thesis written by Jan Hietel. It should be published soon in AltoDoc. So Ilmatar is this overhead crane located at Alto Industrial Internet Campus at K3. The crane has PLC system with an OPC UA interface. Basically, this interface allows an access to internal state of the crane. The internal state is mapped into variables which can be read and also changed. For example, the speed of the crane can be modified via OPC UA. The motivation for GraphQL interface is to make Crane more developer friendly. We have had several student projects around the Crane and before they have had to use a Python library to control the Crane. GraphQL interface allows writing the software with any programming language. From digital twin perspective, GraphQL interface allows communication with the physical product and getting the information on its state. The working principle of the system is that the GraphQL API takes GraphQL queries as input. After a query, it creates communication channel to the OPC UA server and translates GraphQL query OPC UA compatible. With subsequent queries, the communication channel is not needed to be initialized again. The table at bottom right shows that about 10 milliseconds latency is added compared to direct requests from OPC UA. However, in reality, the latency is around 100 milliseconds, which is still sufficient for most of the cases, such as driving the crane. What are the applications of this interface? As a part of Janis' master's thesis, a web application for monitoring and controlling the crane was developed. The crane can now be controlled with a cell phone using these buttons of the web application. The application has also an extra feature which allows viewing the IP camera attached to the crane, which shows the hook. As GraphQL allows subscriptions, the interface can be used to monitor and collect data from the crane. Other machines or devices can also use GraphQL interface to communicate with the crane. Finally, GraphQL interface offers an interface which allows communication with the physical product for the digital twin broker. So, that was about some of the current research related to digital twins in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Thank you.